I'd like to start this morning by acknowledging that we're on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil peoples. My name is Heather Geese. I'm co-chair of COPE, the Coalition of Progressive Electors, and I'm thrilled to be introducing Sid Chow Tan this morning, who is seeking nomination with COPE for council. Born in China and a paper baby son, a legal immigrant to Canada in 1950 following the repeal of the Chinese exclusion, Sid has been active for nearly three decades in community media and redress for the Chinese head tax exclusion laws. A freelance media producer and community organizer, Sid's current community service includes national chairman of the Chinese Canadian National Council and founding and current director of Head Tax Family Society of Canada, Access Association of Chinese Canadians for Equality and Solidarity Society, National Anti-Racism Council of Canada, Downtown Eastside Community Arts Network, Downtown Eastside Neighborhood Council, W2 Social Enterprise Cafe Society, CMES Community Media Education Society, and W2 Community Arts Society. Soon to be operating a multi-purpose, multi-platform media arts center in the historic Woodwards building. Sid obviously has been spending the last 30 years organizing and strengthening community organizations. He's also father to a son and daughter. His art is activism and his trade is organizing. I'm Woo. pleased to introduce Woo. Sid. Woo. Thank you, Heather. Yeah. Right on. Um, let me begin by acknowledging this is First Nations land belonging to the Coast Salish peoples, including the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh. I'd also like to ask you, if you will, to imagine what it feels like to have your land stolen, to have your culture pushed to the margins. We should acknowledge this neighborhood is the heart of our city's Japanese community until the Second World War, before those of Japanese descent were forcibly removed from here. Their homes and properties confiscated Imagine how that feels, to have it all heartlessly taken away, your friends and families disappeared into internment camps. My name is Sid Tan, and today I'm seeking the nomination with the Coalition of Progressive Electors for Vancouver City Council. I believe the good people of Vancouver want developer money out of our city hall. I love the downtown east side. I love Vancouver. With COPE, we will build a better city, a city with heart, a Vancouver that everyone can afford. I'd also like to acknowledge that up to the present day, this neighborhood has been home to many Chinese seniors. The building across the street at 439 Powell was home to nine ethnic Chinese seniors and another senior until last year. But in July 2013, they were literally evicted into the streets, their belongings left in the middle of the sidewalk. The city offered them inadequate housing, much like they're doing for the people at the tent city here. Imagine what that feels like after committing years of your life to this community, to this city, to be treated so cruelly. Indeed, some of the tenants have passed away. The process of eviction was too much for them and too much for their health. I acknowledge you all for coming today. It is inspiring and humbling to be standing here with you. Activists and journalists, thank you for being here. We are all here today because we care about this city and its diverse communities. We care about members of our community who are mistreated, who suffer poverty and discrimination. The idea is to build a city so that everyone can live in dignity, a city where all residents can afford a home, a city where the most financially vulnerable need not fear being evicted. That is why we are gathered here today. But first, let me tell you a little bit about my own journey and how I got here. 
I am China born in 1949 and Canadian made since. Just after the repeal of Chinese Exclusion Act in 1947, my grandfather in Canada since 1919 was able to unite with his family and his wife, Nui, in small town Saskatchewan. I am a paper son, or a so-called illegal immigrant. My arrival in Canada happened before I could walk. My grandfather, who paid the Chinese head tax, and grandmother, who was separated from him for over 26 years, had brought falsified papers claiming I was their son. Our family was regularized under an amnesty and became Canadian citizens in 1964. I graduated from the University of Calgary and moved to Vancouver 40 years ago. As many of you know, I've been active for nearly three decades in community media and in redress for the Chinese head tax and exclusion laws. Here in Vancouver, I have worked with incredible people to build grassroots institutions that filled my personal and community needs. I was national chairman of the Chinese Canadian National Council. I was a founding director and co-chairperson of Head Tax Family Society of Canada. I was a founding director and president of the Association of Chinese Canadians for Equality and Solidarity Society. One of the incredible people that I met is Charlie Kwan, my hero. Charlie fought for many decades to get redress for the Chinese head tax and exclusion legislation. It was my honor to see him work and to receive his wisdom. He was always there, stepping up for head tax and exclusion families when most needed. Isn't that what champions and heroes do? Well into his 90s, he led the movement to a partial success. Charlie Kwan passed away two years ago at the young age of 105, but not before winning an apology from the government and a tax refund. Charlie Kwan was the first person to receive the $20,000 ex gratia redress payment from the government. When I visited him, him at his club the next day, he was beaming, took me aside and said, chink no more, I got my money back. Charlie put a big idea into simple words. We were so happy for him that I did not realize the profoundness of his statement. Now, after reflecting on our time together, it was clear to Charlie the apology meant little without direct, symbolic tax refund. Charlie has taught me we are a species of ideas, words, and action. And that's the spirit I want to ignite in this campaign. We have to transform ideas into words and words into action. And we have to fight for as long as it takes to get justice and redress for everyone who needs it in our society. I have watched our city government promise to end homelessness, but now homelessness has reached the highest level in recorded history. Meanwhile, City Hall wrote a law to fine homeless renters $10,000. I want to amplify the voices of those tenting in the park until they can say, homeless no more. We got our housing back. I watched renters and seniors, like those at 439 Powell Street, pushed out of their homes and neighborhoods as Vancouver becomes less and less affordable. I want to help amplify the voices of renters and seniors in them until they can say, evicted no more, we got our neighborhood back. It's time to take our city back from the developers that are at City Hall.